here's the way that this might be working. You might have running on a web server a DNS service for domain name lookups. It runs over UDP port 53. You may have a web server running on that computer. It runs on TCP port 80. You may also have a secure web server running on that for encrypted communication. Maybe you'd like to give a credit card or that type of information. It's running on TCP port 443. My computer, which I may be sending traffic out to this port 80, I use a port number that I just choose. Let's choose port number 1331. It's chosen automatically by my computer. I don't really make that decision. My computer does it for me. And it sends a packet off to the web server saying, hey, this is coming from 192.168.0.5 over the TCP protocol on port number 1331. Hey, port 80, are you there? And the web server will respond back, yes, I'm here. Uh, here's the answer to the question you're asking, and it sends it back to me at this IP address over this TCP port number. And so all of these numbers working together, you can see you can start building these very complex flows of communication back and forth. But this allows every computer communicating to every web server using different port numbers to all be in a separate world. And so the web servers can keep track of where everybody is, of who made the request, of how to get the response back to those end users. And it's the combination of IP addressing and port number that allows us to do that. For your CompTIA exam, you're going to be expected to know what some very common TCP port numbers are. And so let's go through this list. This is something that you will want to memorize. And in, in some cases, you may already know this. For instance, our web services, which run HTTP. That's the protocol that's used for our web servers. That's called Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That uses the TCP protocol of 80. And you'll notice when you start reading about port numbers and protocols that very often we write it this way, with a TCP, a slash, and an 80. If this was a UDP protocol, we'd do a UDP slash and the number that's being used there. So putting the TCP in front of it really designates that this is the TCP family of protocols. Remember, TCP 80 and UDP 80 are completely different things. And fortunately for the CompTIA exam, all of the protocols that we need to know, all the common port numbers that we need to know are all TCP-based protocols. For FTP, which is the file transfer protocol, FTP actually uses two, in some cases more. But for the purposes of what we need to know, uh, FTP uses two ports, one for data and one for controlling the communication between the two. Data is sent over TCP port 20. And the control is sent over TCP port 21. So pretty easy to remember. They're right next to each other, number 20 and number 21. Whenever we start pulling data down from a mail server into our mail client, very often we're using the protocol POP3, which stands for Post Office Protocol version 3. POP3 uses a TCP port number 110 to communicate. The next one we need to know is another type of mail protocol, SMTP. This stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. POP3 is what we use to retrieve our mail. To be able to send mail, we use SMTP. And whenever we send that traffic to an SMTP server, we're sending it out to TCP port number 25. And the Telnet protocol is a very common one. Telnet is used to communicate at a command line to devices that are on the network. It's not a very secure mode of communicating, but it's a very simple mode of communicating in a console mode, a text-based view. And that uses TCP port number 23. And lastly, I mentioned being able to communicate securely to web servers. In the example I gave before, that uses HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. Now, unfortunately, it's not running on port 81. That would have been great if it was 80 and 81, like FTP was 20 and 21. But no, we can't make it that easy. It actually uses TCP port 443. So whenever you look at a web server, people very often say, it's a web server. It's running on port 80 and port 443. That's what they're referring to. They're referring to the unencrypted traffic over port 80 and the encrypted traffic over port 443. So that's the mix of the protocols and the port numbers that you'll need to memorize for your exam. And if you've been using any of these on your network or doing any type of network level views for any amount of time, these are very common for you. And fortunately, the uh, Network Plus exam goes into a lot more detail. But the A Plus exam only requires that you know these particular protocols from the certification requirements. Let's see what we can remember about port numbers on our network. Our first question is, what ports are commonly used for FTP? Now, if you recall, there were actually, for file transfer protocol, there were really two port numbers that were used. They were right next to each other. And they are TCP port 20 for data and TCP port 21 for control. The next question, what ports commonly used for POP3? 
our post office protocol version three uses one particular TCP protocol port number 110 to be able to communicate. And the last question, what port's commonly used for SMTP? That is our simple mail transfer protocol. And again, it is a single TCP port that is used. It is port number 25. So again, you may get a number of these questions on your exam. It's important that you go back and memorize at least the minimum number of those different protocols we had before, because that's a very common question that you might get on your CompTIA exam. That covers what we needed to know for understanding the common port numbers that we're going to have to have directly from our 220-701 section 4.1. If you'd like to watch any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can contact us on our website. Visit us at freeaplus.com.